You boys be quiet down there! Thanks for joining me once again. We're on our way to looking at every Neo Geo game in order of catalog number. This time on the series, it's Puzzled, aka Joy Joy Kid, which was released in 1990 by SNK. Produced by SNK founder Eikichi Kawasaki. The game was known as Joy Joy Kid in Japan, but for the English release, it was given the more pragmatic title, Puzzled. Puzzled is possibly the most generic puzzle game title conceivable, and would work for nearly any puzzle game. Also, the way the Joy Joy Kid logo moves and scales on the title screen looks much nicer than the motionless title screen in the English version. We'll be looking at Puzzled on my MBS cartridge here. This is the Japanese version, so the label has the Japanese title, Joy Joy Kid. Is Joy Joy Kid, or Puzzled, just a Tetris clone? Most people will take one look at Puzzled and form their own opinions, but while it obviously takes a lot of inspiration from Tetris, Puzzled adds a chain reaction system that does make it its own game. Long ago, there was a village of men and a village of women, who were at war with each other for quite a while. It was so bad that only the elderly and children were left in the villages. To stop the fighting, the sun god built walls to separate the villages, with a tower in the center. The tower blocked out the sun so the villages could no longer receive sunlight. Both villages get the same idea, and send a boy and a girl in balloons up the tower to beg the sun god to bring the sun back. Play as either the boy, Rad, or the girl, Am, and ascend the tower in your blimp, or balloon, or what have you. The game's story is adorable, although when you think about it, the idea of a war where all the able-bodied adults died is quite violent, but that can be glossed over with cute graphics. Never mind the impractical scenario of separate warring villages for men and women. How do they procreate? This is schoolyard war of the sexes taken to its logical conclusion. The story seems aimed at kids, and that keeps things cute. Choose to help Am or Rad, and pilot your balloon up six stages, consisting of ten floors each. Hey there, blimpy boy, flying through the sky so fancy free. But on each floor, your balloon or blimp will get stuck, blocked in by a formation of blocks. Hey there, blimpy boy, flying through the sky so fancy free. Am or Rad won't be able to proceed until you clear the blocks they are stuck under by making Tetris-style lines. Some of these blocks take more than one hit or line before they're destroyed. Viewers take note, if you ever plan to ascend a huge tower, doing so in a balloon where you get stuck bumping your head waiting for someone to play Tetris to get the obstacles out of your way may not be your best bet. But hindsight is always 2020 with these things. You have basic Tetris controls here. Press A to rotate the active piece, or tetromino if you will. By the way, the Tetris company has a copyright on the term tetromino, but the actual shapes are not protected by copyright. Unfortunately, in this game, you can only rotate the pieces counterclockwise. There is no button to rotate clockwise. Down fast drops the tetromino, but you can't press up to instant drop like in other games. The controls in this game can be a little stiff and take a little time to get used to. You have a special item called a lightning ball that you can use with the B button. You can earn a lightning ball by filling the gauge in the center of the screen. The gauge fills up gradually as you complete lines, and it can take some time to fill, so be careful with your lightning balls. The lightning ball is very useful because it destroys the blocks immediately surrounding the player balloon. A well-timed lightning ball can mean all the difference between passing or not passing a difficult floor. The lightning balls can turn an impossible floor into something that you might have a chance to eventually pass with some persistence. They really can mix things up by lending a helping hand to players when they're struggling. Puzzled looks like it's just a clone of Tetris, but it has one key change to the gameplay that makes all the difference. And no, it's not just the fact that you're saving a kid in a balloon. Unlike in Tetris, after clearing a line, gravity immediately takes over and all of the player blocks independently fall down. Blocks that came with the stage from the start do not move. In many ways, this makes the game easier. You are able to clear a lot of the pollution from the screen simply by completing a single line, and all the blocks falling down sometimes cause other lines below to complete. 
Setting off a series of chain reactions in this game isn't something you necessarily fully plan, but it is fun to watch. Just like in Sega's columns, chain reactions pump up the juice. Sometimes blocks are stacked high to the top of the playfield, but upon clearing one line, it can be a huge relief as everything falls down and fills the unused space, sometimes completing other lines. You may just suddenly complete a level without even realizing you were close. It's a great feeling to suddenly pass a stage that you've been working on for a long time. Sometimes the unpredictability of all the blocks suddenly falling upon completing one line can make it feel like there is an element of luck to puzzle. But the more you play, the more it's possible to learn strategies to overcome the odds. As you move into the more advanced stages, you have to plan ahead in order to avoid creating anthills. And by anthills, I mean when you attempt to drop pieces down a pit, but end up increasing the height of the areas around the pit. This comes up more often in the later stages of the game. Eventually in 1993, Tetris Flash, known as Tetris 2 outside of Japan, used a similar rule where the player's pieces fell down after completing lines, but since the goal of Tetris Flash is to match colors, it isn't much like a real Tetris game and more like Dr. Mario, but with pills that would be extremely difficult to swallow. Later in 1993, Bulletproof Software released Tetris Battle Gaiden for Super Famicom, which included an optional Rensa mode where the blocks collapsed after completing a line. Since you aren't trying to free a balloon in this game, the chain reactions don't change the flow of the original Tetris formula as much as they do in Puzzle. But it is definitely one of the more interesting Tetris releases, so fans of Puzzle should check out Tetris Battle Gaiden, and vice versa. Puzzled unfortunately has no two-player versus mode. Though the game has a two-player split-screen view, the two players ascend the tower independently and have no interaction with each other. Similar to the Genesis and arcade versions of Columns, which have a two-player mode but no versus mode, in Puzzled you are basically each both playing your own one-player version of the game simultaneously, which is why the ending and cutscenes all only fill half the screen in this game. The game consists of 6 stages, with 10 floors each stage. After each stage, you will be treated to a cutscene with one of the gods. I am the god of Saturn. Hey shorty, you can't go any further. I will beg the god of sun to forgive our village. May I pass through here? Oki, okay, you can bring this key with you. In true Neo Geo fashion, the dialogue is awkward, and despite our contemporary sensibilities, hey look, he's smoking! Upon completing the sixth stage, the Sun God will inform you that we're still waiting for our last west to Aruv. You must then complete a more difficult second loop of the six stages as the other character, for a total of 12 stages. This means the game has a total of 120 boards, or floors. Due to its length and high level of challenge, this is a game where you'll probably want to use a memory card to save your progress and come back to it later. Both players are able to independently save their progress, and there are four save slots available on one memory card. And if you're playing in two player mode, the game will tell the second player to please wait your load, while the first player chooses the save file, because you have to mind your load. After stages 3 and 5, you will get to play a simple platforming minigame bonus stage, where it's your job to guide your character to the top with some well-timed jumps. Don't worry, if you fail, you still will get the key and go to the next stage. All you get for successful completion of the bonus stage is a refill of your lightning ball power. These bonus stages add welcome variety, but are way too few and far between. These stages are so rare and you only get one shot at them, so it can be frustrating when you almost make it and can't retry. It's kind of crazy that they made this whole platforming segment that you almost never get to play. At any rate, these are still a welcome addition to the game. Puzzled is not going to win any awards for its graphics. The game functions as a fun arcade game, but doesn't show off the power of the Neo Geo. Those who bought a Neo Geo for its flashy graphics may have overlooked this one. Like in League Bowling, the entire game, including all cutscenes and the ending, has the screen split into two sides for first and second players. There isn't any full screen mode, even when playing in one player mode. The graphics are just Tetris with a balloon. The background graphics change slightly for each stage. The cute story graphics at least add a fun theme to the game and look nice. 
The music was composed by Yoshihiko Kitamura, who made music for plenty of famous SNK games throughout the Neo Geo's life, up to SNK's bankruptcy. Think of any major SNK series, and chances are Kitamura had a hand in the soundtrack at some point. There isn't much to say about the music here, except that it gets the job done. The instrument choices sound really good and clean, which made the game feel somewhat new and futuristic when it was released. Unfortunately, during gameplay, the constant sound of your balloon bouncing off the blocks can get annoying, making it harder to enjoy the music. SNK probably wanted some noise in the arcade to signify that your balloon is trapped and needs help. This sound never stops until you've freed the balloon and cleared the stage, so it becomes almost like a part of the soundtrack, which really wears thin and becomes obnoxious. Each stage has its own musical theme, and most of them are quite catchy. However, completing 10 floors in a row with the same music can become grating as the game wears on. Given the difficulty of the game, with all the retrying, the music can begin to wear out its welcome. Generally in two-player mode, whoever is further in the game dictates which song plays. The music takes a turn for the worse after you finish the first loop of the game and start over at stage 1. Most of the music in the second loop consists of much less catchy, foreboding organ music, which gets annoying much faster than the music in the first loop. Strangely, only every other stage has new music in the second loop of the game, so you end up hearing a reused music track for half the stages of the second loop. Since the second loop is obviously harder than the first, expect the soundtrack to get even more worn out the second time through as the game drags on. The Neo Geo CD version of Puzzled attempts to deliver an experience similar to the cartridge. The whole game loads up in about 19 seconds on a single speed system and never needs to load again. Given the game's age, it's no surprise that there isn't any arranged music. The soundtrack is just the cartridge music played back from CD audio tracks. Although the echo effect that they've added to the music is very noticeable. The echo sounds nice, but is inauthentic to the original cartridge version, so you may or may not appreciate this added effect. As usual, there's a slight delay when changing music because the disc drive has to access the audio tracks. When clearing a stage or waiting for the continue screen, the game freezes to wait for the music to begin. Fortunately, in one-player mode, the game never freezes to wait for the music during gameplay. For example, when switching from the normal speed version of the song to the faster version, as the blocks pile up, the game doesn't stop to wait for the music. If they had done that in Puzzled, the game stopping all the time would probably be game-breaking. And this brings us to where the CD version falters, the two-player mode. As I mentioned, the game freezes upon clearing a stage or continuing, and this happens even while the other player is playing. So while one player is attempting to play, the game is freezing to load for the other player. This can be extremely annoying for the player who is still playing. For this reason, playing the CD version of Puzzled in two-player mode is not recommended. In fact, you should skip the CD version in favor of the cartridge, if possible. We've been looking at games released in 1990 and 1991 lately on the series, as well as one game from 1992. But Puzzles was released in November of 1990, so it's a somewhat early Neo Geo release. Puzzled is a relatively simple puzzle game, so the game probably had a shorter development cycle than most. Though most games with an NGH number in the early 20s were released in 1991, like League Bowling, Puzzled made it out in 1990. 
At only 22 megs, Puzzled is the smallest game released for Neo Geo. It's the first puzzle game on the platform, although it might not have ended up that way had ADK decided to release Sunshine, aka Block Paradise. If you haven't already, go back and check out the NGH008 video in this series for more details on that unreleased game. English language MBS versions of Puzzled were only available on demand from SNK, and the AES version was released in Europe but not in the US. SNK may have somewhat backed off from fully releasing this game everywhere back in 1991 due to the ongoing legal issues surrounding Tetris between Nintendo, Atari, and Sega at the time. That's why it's surprising this was re-released to download on modern consoles in 2017 as part of the Arcade Archive series from Hamster. It was even included in the Japanese and international versions of the Neo Geo Mini system. The launch of the Neo Geo in 1990 is marked by a sudden influx of new releases from SNK, an attempt to quickly build out a library for the new console. If you look at the initial lineup of Neo Geo games released in that first year, the library is similar to Sega's initial releases on the Mega Drive. Riding Hero takes obvious inspiration from Super Hang-On, Magician Lord has similarities to Ghouls and Ghosts, and so on. While many of these are good games, their designs are rooted in concepts from the mid-1980s, making them feel perhaps a bit stale in 1990. Falling block puzzle games like Sega's Columns and SNK's Puzzled aren't for everyone, but by offering their own takes on Tetris, which was skyrocketing in popularity with its 1989 Game Boy release, the two companies showed their willingness to release games more in line with current trends, even if their concepts could have run on older hardware. In 1991, both of the companies would release games that weren't just in line with trends, but made novel use of 16-bit hardware and drove trends forward. You probably won't want to spend time on Puzzled if you don't like puzzle games, and at 22 megs, the game certainly is neither bigger, badder, nor better. But for arcade operators, Puzzled offered an inexpensive way to round out their lineup with a game in line with current trends. And it might be interesting to players today who want to learn more about the history and variety of the early Neo Geo library. Puzzle game fans should definitely give it a look. While the game's most noticeable qualities are the ways it flagrantly copies Tetris, upon playing the game, you'll find it actually has its own unique flourishes. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we'll be looking at NGH022, Blue's Journey, aka Ragi. So I hope you'll join me. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.